Junior Hockey Network Hockey Show with a coach uh, Wayne Strahan from the Fort Francis Acres. How are you today, Wayne? I'm good, Jay. How are you? Good. Uh, first, we'll touch base first just about um, coming off two two losses last week, November 22nd, 24th, uh, to the first place Norskis and the third place uh, North Stars. Can you talk a little bit about those losses? Uh, first game uh, on the road against the Norskis, you know, I thought uh, uh, we played a pretty good hockey game and, and through the first 40 minutes, uh, Definitely gave ourselves a uh, a good chance to 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 be in the game and and have success and and then in the third uh, you know we come out for a shift uh, give up a goal and and um, you know really just uh, simple mental mistakes that have happened throughout the year have have continued to haunt us and and that's what hurts us in the. Uh, the last period and you know the North Keys are obviously a team that are winning games uh coming back in a lot of those games and and understanding what it takes to win and and uh I guess that's a concept we need to bring into our game and and uh obviously um with December 1st looming tomorrow um you know we have to evaluate some of our uh, players in that manner, and are they going to get that concept, and and can they improve? Uh, I guess through the last, you know, three three and a half months before the end of the year, before playoffs, to to help us be a winning team by the end. And you know, uh, Friday night against Thunder Bay, a uh, game we <laughs> would like to forget about. We just. Uh, uh, and I, I shouldn't say that, you know, for the first uh, 20 minutes and and about five minutes of the second period, uh, again, we are we worked hard, we're in the game, we're creating opportunities, and and then I, I'm not sure what happened, but it, it was like a switch turned, and and then our effort went a little bit south and, and never really uh, gave ourselves a chance uh, through the last, um, you know, better part of uh, probably 35 minutes uh, to win the hockey game. And again, those mental mistakes uh, hurt us, uh, some untimely penalties and and really kind of a dismal effort uh, through the last part of the game. And with, the, with those two losses, you, you totaled about 30 minutes in penalties. Is playing short-handed uh, one quarter of the game so far this season a factor in your team's success? Uh, for sh- I think for sure. Um, and, you know, we're not one of the most penalized teams in the league, but the time when we take penalties uh, hurts us. And, you know, in a 2-2 hockey game, or even if you're losing 3-2, uh, you don't need a, a five-minute penalty to kill, or you don't even need a, you know, a hooking penalty in the offensive zone to kill. And it's it's penalties like that that hurt you. And and um, you know, it's something we've addressed, and but it keeps happening over and over again. And um, you know, the guys, the guys within the room, the leaders need to step up and and take control and, and kind of uh, help, I guess, the coaching staff out in that manner. And, and I know it is it is being done, but there's some young guys that, that need to grow their game and, and obviously uh, realize what's happening right now. And we've touched base on this over the last four weeks, but it's continuing a little bit. Like so A lot of the rookies are producing, some of the veterans, but a lot of the veterans aren't 
producing what they you're used to having them do. Is it time to do something about that with December first looming? Uh, it's it's definitely something we've looked at and thought about. Um, you know, we're, we do realize that uh, you know some guys that have been here, uh, you know, maybe not producing or or maybe progressing their game from the previous two years like they have, but. Um, they're all, they're also a big part of our team in other manners or other ways and whether it's leadership or or whatnot. But um, you know, in the next day or so, uh, uh, that's definitely something that we've looked at or thought about doing, and and even to send a message to maybe some of the other vets or. Or just open some eyes to to new guys that need to realize that um, the time and effort has to be put in, or um, the opportunity, I guess, to to be at this level might not be there. So um, it's something we've looked at. I don't know if we'll make a move. Uh, I'm pretty loyal to veteran players, and and obviously believe that they they can get it done and, and hope that they can get it done, I guess, but we'll see what happens. And like you say, now that you know the other team's rosters, I don't mean that way, but you see them so much. And other than the wins, the, the other four teams in front of you in the standings have, what is different in their roster compared to yours with you sitting in fifth place? Sorry, Jay, what was that again? Sorry. Now, like you said, sitting in fifth place and like you, said, you have four teams ahead of you. And of course the wins are the, what the factors where you're sitting in the rosters, but What's what's compared to your roster? What's what's working for them and maybe not working for you guys? Uh, well, um, right now I, I think uh, the other teams have uh, a little more experience on defense, um, or had have had the opportunity to add some guys that have have definitely improve their defense and and that's one area we're trying to concentrate on before tomorrow and we're hoping uh we can obviously get something done here uh to strengthen that manner um you know and if you look at the goaltending statistics and i don't think it falls all on our goaltenders but the four teams uh Obviously, have at some point uh, got some strong goaltending, and and um, you know, if you take the Norskis for for example, have two goalies that they could roll on any night and and that keep winning, and um, that's a big part of success. And you know, through the first part, we've had a hard part or a hard time. Uh, Putting pucks in the net and um, where other teams, I guess, that have played us uh, seem to seem to have a lot more breaks or bounces go their way and for some reason, and I'm not sure why, but uh, I am a firm believer in the earned and maybe we have to work a little harder consistently to earn those bounces and breaks and, um, you know, and just I guess something we just talked about the the veteran players or a lot of veteran players that uh, if you look through Dryden's lineup, if you look through um, English River, Thunder Bay, and Thief River, the the guys that were here last year, the guys that have been here a couple years, are their main guys and leading their uh, leading the charge for them and and producing. So um, if you look at our roster, our <laughs> Like we just talked, most of our top scores are, are first year guys, and um, that's not to, like I said, take anything away from our veterans, but uh, we need more production throughout the lineup to, to have success. Well, here we'll turn the tables a little bit and talk a little bit more positive. Uh, last night at the 2017 All Star Game in Minnesota, you were one of the assistant coaches for Team Canada. Can you talk a little bit about the experience for yourself and also what your players thought about the All Star Game? 
Well, I thought it was uh, a great show. You know, we went in Tuesday night, uh, had a, a group, uh, both teams uh, were together with uh, the host committee and had a great meal and, and then just gave us an opportunity, I guess, as um, coaching staffs and whatnot to get together and, and uh, you know, have a good time with one another and and talk in in a manner that usually we we don't get uh and um you know then yesterday uh wake up early get a chance to to uh skate as a team and and get ready for the the game that night and throughout the day uh um again team meals uh tour of the um hockey u s a uh, hall of fame and 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 then the skills competition and game. So it was it was a fun atmosphere. Um you know, I I believe uh everyone uh that participated enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sure the the outcome for Team Canada wasn't very enjoying, but nonetheless not to take anything away from the game and, and the competition and and um just what went along with everything. The hospitality was great and uh, just a fun atmosphere to be a part of. And that, and that's like I say with all star games and stuff like that. With, with I guess with what happens in society today, and when when your guys say strap on a Fort Francis Laker jersey and um, like to Dryden, everybody f- straps on pulls on their own jerseys. It shows that like in sports today, they can still come together, put on a, a Team Canada, Team USA jersey, and just be reunited for a couple of days and have some fun, right? For sure, and, you know you saw the the guys interacting and and um uh, joking around with one another and and that might have been the maybe the difference in the the outcome um to me just to watch the game and it looked like USA was um maybe a little bit more together where uh the Canadian bench seemed quiet and weren't really uh I don't know if it, what to call it or what to say, but just you know, weren't on the same um, page, so to speak, and in, in cheerful and cheering one another on and stuff. And it, I think that's what kind of separated in the game. And and obviously, the U.S. had uh, numerous um, Thief River Falls Norskis, so to add a a few more players. Um, to their lineup uh, was a little bit easier than our task, but um, you could. It just seemed like they gelled a little bit better with one another, and and somewhat kind of maybe of a tension, not in the locker room, but just um, on the bench and on Team Canada, and and not that it was a negative thing or anything. I think everyone enjoyed the experience, but. Um, that could have been the difference in the outcome of the game. Well, like say one of your players, Nick Nick Lucas, was down down in Minnesota at the All Star game and had the most goals in the shootout competition in the All Stars competition. Does that may, mean you might add him more in the shootouts during the regular season? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and, you know, our our assistant coach Nick Riggett was a part of the All Star game as well, and um, you know we we were laughing after the game I, that. Uh, definitely have to look at that aspect if we if we get that opportunity and and then we're trying to think if he's been here for a shootout and I don't think he has yet. Uh, um, so that's some for sure we were would look at. They were calling him the uh, TJ Oshi uh, Team USA there and and rightfully so. You know he he had success. He he uh, you know was patient, took his time where. Seem like some of the other guys that were in the competition or or in that particular event uh, were maybe rushing it a, a little bit, and uh, he just went about his business and, and obviously had success. And, and that's one thing. Like I talked to Brian Graham, the commissioner, about giving players some more exposure when it comes to the All Star Game for the schools and like say um, other teams at different levels. But just using Nick as an example, you, again, you, he hasn't had a chance to do the shootout, but it, it opened your eyes to uh, one of the skills that might might be positive for the Lakers down the road, right? 
for sure. Um, you know, and and uh, obviously, I think that was the whole intent behind uh, the All Star Game was to attract scouts, and and I did see uh, numerous around, um, and not that I was paying attention to a lot of that, but seen a couple guys I knew and whatnot, so. That was good, uh, good for obviously the players that were in the game, and and uh, you know it, it's a chance for players to shine, and um, you know I thought uh, for the most part the Lakers were rep- represented well. Uh, all our guys played hard and, and had their opportunities or or moments throughout the hockey games to to uh, um, be noticed and. And hopefully that uh, helps them further down the road, uh, along with everyone else that partook in it. And going going into uh, December, you you open up the, the the month of December with one game this weekend on the first at seven thirty at home against the North Skis. Can you talk a little bit about facing the North Skis for uh, the seventh time this season? Well, uh, obviously we need to have success. We need to get some confidence uh, against them, and and you know we sit here knowing that it's. It's not going to be a, a easy task, uh, you know, sitting and talking with um, uh, Cole and, and Kane uh, throughout the past couple of days. They've obviously added some uh, pieces to, to what they feel makes them better, and and uh, we'll have a couple new forwards uh, that we'll announce uh, today uh, in the lineup, and and. Um, so yeah, it's not going to be easy, uh, but we definitely need to uh, get a win against them. And and the biggest thing is to me, uh, uh, we have to have every guy come and put in a sixty-minute effort and and uh, try and limit uh, those mental mistakes we have. The intensity needs to be there for sixty minutes, and obviously we have to capitalize on. Our opportunities to to help our cause, and and uh, with English River, who's uh, just sitting ahead of you in in the in the rosters by six points, like I say, they handed the Norskies their first loss this season. So so it, sh- it shows the other team in the league that it is possible to to, to beat the Norskies this year, right? For sure, um, you know we've been close, and obviously close doesn't doesn't count. But um, you know I think on any given night. Uh, throughout the league and um, if you're not ready to play and, and you're not going to play at your uh, or do the things that you do best as a team then you're going to be vulnerable to, to lose hockey games and you know if you look at our month coming up uh, it's a huge month for us and it's it's a tough month and I believe all we play is the uh, uh, Norskis uh, the Miners and and the GM Ice Dogs, and um, <laughs> you know we we need to have s- some success throughout the month, or, or we're going to put ourselves in a, a tough spot uh, heading into the second half of the season. And totally understandable. Well, thank you very much, uh, Wayne, uh, uh, for sitting with me today, and uh, good luck tomorrow night. And we'll uh, talk next week. Okay, sounds great, Jay. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.